Hello everybody, this is Jack Dennis and welcome to our Jack Dennis Fly Fishing channel on YouTube. We're going to be talking saltwater here in the next uh, few segments as we're going to be featuring Volume 2 of Jimmy Nick's Tying Saltwater Flies. We did feature Volume 1 which included a lot of great bonefish patterns, but now we're going to the bigger fish. The fish that are sometimes as big as you are, tarpon and beyond. So Jimmy, uh, maybe you don't know who he is, but Jimmy was one of the leading tires 30 years ago to come up with innovating both bass and saltwater patterns. I really think you're going to enjoy uh, taking a look back at where saltwater fly fishing came from and tying and enjoy some scenes from Belize. But have fun with my friend Jimmy. It was only happened 30 years ago, but it's still timeless. But I like this one, and I know the fish are going to. So let's go fish it. Hi, I'd like to introduce you to my absolute very favorite tarpon fly and probably a fly if you walked into a fly shop wouldn't buy. I was introduced to this fly by a young man named Rob Fordyce. Both this fly and Rob Fordyce, my guide, helped me win the Don Holly Tarpon Tournament this year. Rob's tarpon fly is tied with a TMC 800S. This is, in my opinion, the absolute very finest tarpon hook that's ever been put on the market. Furnace saddle, and you want really skinny furnace saddle, unlike most tarpon flies. Crystal flash, badger hair, and orange hackle is optional. We fish it both ways. Fluorescent orange flat wax nylon for the thread. Let me grab this thread and let me show you this fly. Okay, let's put a jam knot on the hook shank right above the point of the hook. Okay, and go back to the bend of the hook. And about halfway back forward. Flatten that thread out. Okay, we'll select two furnace feathers. Very long, very skinny. And instead of having them curve out, we're going to have them curve in. And you heard me right when I said only two. This is an unorthodox tarpon fly. But also it's given me some of the best days of tarpon I've ever had in my life. And we'll just wiggle it, get it right on top of the hook shank. And come back to our original tie-in area. And put a drop of flex cement right there. Okay, we'll cut off a clump of badger here. Now we don't want all of this under fur, but we're going to take about half of it out. And again, this is a real, real sparse tarpon fly. We're going to tie these very long. In fact, we're going to get as much of the badger as we can get off. We're just going to even up the tips. Hold it on the near side. Mash it with your thumb to spread it out. Do the same thing on the other side. And be sure they're even. Okay, wrap our thread forward. To our original tie-in area. 
put on three or four strands of crystal flash. Double it around our thread and hold it on both sides of our hook shank and come forward about half the tie-in area. Cut the crystal flash about the same length as the badger. Okay, now you can fish this two ways. You can finish off the head right here, epoxy it, and fish it just like it is. Or you can put one orange and one only saddle on there. For a collar. We fish it both ways. Trim it off, pull all this hackle back, and we'll over wrap it a little bit where it'll lay back. Okay, finished off with a very small tapered head. Here again, keep that thread flat. very small head. Whip finish. Cement or epoxy that head, however you want to finish it off. Tell you another little trick. Just take some barred or some kind of waterproof cement, cement these two tips together. I'll guarantee you tarpon eat it like crazy. Okay, we're tarpon fishing here in Belize. Unlike Florida where you're fishing the flats, we're fishing some creeks in the mangroves. So we're gonna be fishing a little deeper. We're gonna be doing some blind casting and hoping we see a tarpon roll and then we'll cast to that individual tarpon. Right now I'm gonna blind cast. I've got a Rob's tarpon fly on here. It's done awful good anywhere I've tarpon fished. Let's give it a cast and see how it does here. 